All right, this is first grade module four, lesson 18. And in this lesson, we are acknowledging that we have taught students a bazillion different ways to add two numbers within 40. And so this lesson, we're gonna pause. And we're really gonna focus on showing a problem having students choose their favorite method, solve it, and then compare techniques and critique each other. And, and not, not critique from a negative point of view, but critique as in having st allowing students to appreciate the beauty of other students' ideas and say, oh, wow, I solved it this way, but boy, I really like your method. Your method was fun. Um, and the idea is maybe students might talk about efficiency but that's not the focus the focus is making sure students uh, understand the number sense and, and understand what's going on when they are solving the problem and that's really the where this focus is uh, on this lesson is solving it sharing talking about it and letting other students appreciate each other's methods so let's get started so all of this really causes me as a math coach to think of number talks and essentially that's what this lesson is is saying hey let's pause let's allow our students to do a number talk ideally we should be doing number talks three or four times a week um, this should be a part of our classroom culture and um, and don't let your Eureka math lessons that sometimes run long uh, get in the way of doing these number talks three or four times a week. Ideally, this lesson could be skipped because we've done so many number talks that our students, it's already ingrained as part of their culture. In fact, oftentimes students, when they're sharing a method, well, let's get, let me talk about what is a number talk. For those who don't know what a number talk is, first, the teacher posts a problem on the board then gives the students some time to solve that problem mentally and that's important because we want to focus on um, a mental techniques because if students are just using paper and pencil it's possible that they're just resorting to um, blindly using an algorithm and really the purpose of a number talk is to allow students to experience and practice and exercise their number sense so that's why we focus on having our students solve the problem mentally. And then the students share their solution methods. And I acknowledge, we acknowledge that sometimes the students are going to share something wrong, but hey, we're, we're going to create a classroom culture where students learn from mistakes as well as learn from their successes. So we're going to have the students share their solution methods. And uh, as the students are sharing the method, the teacher is going to record that on the board, trying her best to copy what the student is saying and put it on a board, not necessarily verbatim, but try and get the concept across on the board so that students can refer to it in later days. Uh, there's a lot of resources on the internet for daily uh, number talks. My personal favorite is www.dailynumbertalks.info. It provides a problem per day for students to use, uh, for teachers to use, and then uh, the teacher can tweet out the student results, you know, the, the, the resulting uh, whiteboard or chalkboard uh, that shows all of the student solution methods. Or you could just pick a problem uh, from like a week or two ago from your lessons uh, two weeks ago and use that as a number talk. It's a great review. Plus, it's a great opportunity for students to solve it mentally. An example of what this might look like. So let's say we've got 17 plus 6, and that is our posted problem. You as a teacher are going to give your first graders a, a minute or so, not very long, uh, to solve that problem in their head. And as students are solving it, you're looking around to see who is able to solve it in their head versus who's struggling. Uh, look at their methods. You, you'll be able to see some kids using the count on method because they're going to count with their fingers uh, while others are, are going to do it differently. And once you've got uh, a good number of your kids with a thumbs up saying they've got a method, perhaps they might even have uh, two thumbs up or maybe they're holding up three fingers to show that they have three different methods for how to solve this problem. That's when you know you've really 
uh, built a nice culture of mathematicians um, when kids not only solve the problem, but they solve it in three different ways. Now you're going to solve the problem and let students explain how did they solve it. Some students might say, well, I counted on. I did 17, and then I did 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And I stopped there because I know that I just counted on six extra fingers, and so my answer is 23. And say, yay! So that student just got the answer. And now the kids are going to say, ooh, I got 23, but I did it in a different way. And you say, oh, great. How did you do it? And so you call on somebody else. And there's a variety of different ways. Another way a student might say is, well, I took 17, and then I took 6, but I decomposed 6. And I know that 17 plus 3 is 20, and then I add the remaining 3, and that's how I got 23. And you go, wow, that's a great method. And you kind of put it somewhere. <laughs> now I'm using the wonders of electronics, so uh, I get to move stuff around. You as a teacher, if you're writing on a whiteboard, you're not going to have that privilege. So you're going to want to try and map out in advance the best you can where you're going to show all these methods. All right, so another method. Another student might say, well... I took 17, oops, but I want it to be in black, okay. I took 17 and 6, but I decomposed it differently. I decomposed it to be 4 and 13. And the reason I did that is because I want to create a 10. So there's 10 plus the original 13 gives me 23. So that's another way students could solve this same problem. Another student might say, well, I just, I started with 17 plus 6, and I used the quick tens method. So what did they do? They said, okay, well, there's my 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's my 7. And then to do 6, I did 1, 2, 3 to fill out a 10, and then 4, 5, 6. So here is a new quick 10, and so my answer is 23. So that's another method using the quick 10 method, and we could just go on and on, and there's so many. Oh, another one. Oh, we got to do this one. Another one, the classic 17 plus 6. Decompose 17. You get 10 and 7, and now we can add 6 and 7, and that gives us 13, plus the 10 in the front gives us 23. So we have yet another technique. So really quickly, parents and teachers, uh, the beauty of this is students get to start to appreciate other techniques that perhaps they themselves did not think of it's also a great way to review uh, all the different ways. Now imagine students being able to look at, whoa, being able to look at this thing for days. And you post this poster paper on your wall, and then tomorrow, oh, maybe tomorrow's problem is 18 plus 5, or maybe it's 18 plus 6, and you don't really change it all that much. And let your students um, use this as their like model paper, uh, exam exemplar paper, uh, to solve it. Now, if you want, you could also make sure you name your things. You could say, oh, this was Joey's method, and this was Christina's method, Christina, and this was, oh, Mark's method. You get the idea. So you can either name them with student names, or you can name, name them with the Eureka Math names, like decomposition, 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 count on, quick 10. So you could do a lot of different ways of how to notate and create vocabulary in your classroom. 
It's a great way to create a classroom culture. It's a great way to allow students to see the beauty of all the different ways to solve math problems. It's just a, it's a number talks. I am absolutely, can you tell? I'm absolutely in favor of them. And that wraps up this wonderful lesson where uh, it's first grade, module four, lesson 18, where students choosing a variety of strategies and they're sharing and critiquing those strategies.